here. All right, can everyone see that? Yes. Perfect. So um, my name is Dr. Hales. Um, I'm a cosmetic dentist. Um, I live in Orange County, California, and I have a practice in Ladera Ranch and also a satellite office up in Beverly Hills. So um, please, if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, I love talking dentistry, so feel free to you know stop anytime during the during the presentation. Um, so hold on real quick. So this is my family. Um, my wife, her name is Aja. We have four kids. Scarlett is our oldest. Her birthday is on Thursday. She's turning nine. Uh, then Jade is seven. Royal, my only boy, is four. And then Goldie is our youngest, and she is 22 months. Um, we're actually getting a puppy on Saturday, so we're adding to the family. Um, so we'll see how that adventure goes. But uh, love dogs, so I'm excited for it. And uh, we'll see what's harder, kids or dogs. So um <clears throat> how my journey kind of began so I was actually born in Los Angeles uh, my dad was in medical school at USC at the time um then we moved down to Orange County where I grew up um for my the rest of my life and then I went to BYU for undergrad um I served a mission for my church uh Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints in Ireland for two years so I learned a lot about having to kind of live out on my own um and really learned a lot of life experience out there um, and then that kind of helped me figure out that what I wanted to do was serve other people um, and really focus in healthcare. And when I came back from my mission, that was when I found dentistry. Um, I took a healthcare professions class in undergrad. And uh, so they had different professionals come and speak to us about their career. And when a dentist came and spoke, I was like, that sounds kind of exactly what I want to do. Um, ended up writing a whole research article on it. And from there, I guess the rest is history. So I got in, I went to USC dental school. I graduated in 2016. Um, my youngest, uh, or sorry, in that picture, that's uh, Jade. She was born uh, two days before I took the boards. Uh, so that was very interesting, <laughs> kind of a surprise, but uh, worked out in the end. Luckily I passed and I uh, was able to get my degree. Um, from work or from dental school, I actually went down to San Diego and started working down there. I had a couple different job opportunities. Um, one of the big things was I just worked on really finding a lot of mentors outside of school. Um, and so when I graduated dental school, I had actually three job offers down in San Diego. Um, I was working at three other practices down there which is what I wanted to do because I wanted a good variety of different kind of offices and what they did. So one was a cosmetic office um, that did a lot of high-end dentistry. Another one was a Medi-Cal office. Um, and then another one was an HMO office. So when you're looking at really different types of practices, all three of those are very different ways that they've set up their practice. And I was able to learn a lot about how insurance works, um, see how those dentists work, how they set up their schedule. Um, so it was really neat. Um, with that, uh, I ended up, you know, eventually wanting to get full time. And so I took a job in Colorado Springs, where <clears throat> these two doctors, they were cosmetic dentists, they owned their own practice, but then they owned a second practice that was next door that was a Medi-Cal office. Um, and so I went and ran that Medi-Cal office. It was really neat because I could literally walk next door and see them perform surgeries, do cosmetics all day long. And then I'd go back and just do my general dentistry, um, which was, you know, it was so busy. Any medical office, you'll notice just tons and tons of patients doing tons and tons of work, which for being right out of school was really good for me. Um, and then they ended up actually putting a program where I became part owner in that practice to help run it. And so I spent a year really running the whole thing. Uh, which was really awesome, just learning from those guys, uh, amazing mentors of mine, um, but also helped me realize that that wasn't my end goal, that I didn't want to spend doing Medi-Cal, you know, for the rest of my life, um, that I wanted to have other things I wanted to do. So I reached out to uh, my current partner, Dr. Parker, who is from Orange County. He's a dentist that I actually grew up with when we were kids, 
And he had started his own practice here in Ladera in 2013 from scratch, um, grew it to a point where he was so busy, he needed to bring someone else on. And that was when I called him. So I came on as a partner in 2019 and uh, kind of began growing our practice, which was uh, Hales Park of Dentistry at the time. So what if I'm not doing dentistry, um, I like doing anything outdoors, um, anything with my family. So obviously playing with my kids, they're actually getting into sports now. So it's a lot of fun. Um, I love water skiing, surfing, um, snow skiing, basically hiking, anything outdoors. I love sports as well. So soccer is my favorite sport. That's what I played growing up. Uh, right now, I love watching Women's World Cup. Uh, so I wish our USA girls were, you know, at least in the finals, but still fun watching, um, you know, delayed, even though I'm not, I'm not waking up at three in the morning to watch it. So we will see how the finals go or the semifinals this afternoon or this evening. All right. So um, cosmetic dentistry um, has a lot of different kind of approaches to it. When you think about cosmetic dentistry, I would say most dentists will probably say they're a cosmetic dentist. Um, there's no real specialty to being a cosmetic dentist. And what does that mean, right? Um, so just means that you're doing pretty work, I guess. And uh, anything that dentistry does should be, you know, pretty should be what you're trying to do is create a tooth that looks natural, whether that's a filling, a crown, you know, root canal, all those things. Um, so, you know, for the most part, any dentist could really say, you know, they're a cosmetic dentist. Um, I take that to another level, which I'll kind of get into. Now, when we're looking at uh, really beauty and we're looking at nature, there's actually something called the golden ratio. And what that means is that uh, there's different proportions within nature that every, everything, every basically nature law follows. Okay. And so that's where this ratio of uh, 1.618. Um, and it kind of turns into this little spiral. So if we look at a rose, you can kind of see how that implements from a ratio of one to 1.618. Um, you can see how that spiral starts to form within, within that beauty of a petal of a rose. Um, you can see it right with the shell, how um, same ratios within the ear, within the face. So it's amazing how when you start to look around at all these things in nature, that they all follow the same type of proportions and the you know, same type of design. And so that mimics the same thing when it comes to the face and when it comes to the teeth. So if you actually look at the, the ratio of the teeth as you go back, the front is one millimeter or 1.6 millimeters to one to 0.6. Now, everything's not perfect, right? I mean, if you look at everyone's teeth, why, if this was true, every tooth would be the same, every smile would be the same. Um, but from uh, basically if, if you're looking at what is beauty or what actually should um, a smile look like these are really the ratios that you're trying to follow um, to an extent so <clears throat> when i started to think about my career um, i was working here as an owner in in hales parker dentistry in ladera ranch um, and i was doing all types of dentistry i was doing you know, general dentistry, I was doing, starting to do some implants. Um, I was doing quite a bit of cosmetics actually at the time. And I kind of came to a point where, you know, I was running my practice as well. I was growing really quickly. Um, and it kind of was overwhelming for me, um, just taking too much on for myself. And I came to a point where I had to kind of make a decision, you know, what did I want to do? Cause the, you know, do I go take more implant courses and get better at that? You know, do I kind of generalize, get better at my general dentistry, um, do more biomedic dentistry? What was it that I wanted to be known for? And the more I started thinking about it, the more, you know, I was really good at cosmetics, which is smile makeovers and veneers. And I realized that that's what really brought my patients true happiness. And it allowed me to really cause or have an effect on my patients so much more than any other aspect that I felt um, that I could provide. And so I went to my partner and I told him, hey, Dr. Parker, um, I'm not going to do any more implants. I'm going to let you do all the implants. He, he was better at them than I was anyways. He had, uh, had a lot more training on it than I did. Um, and I just said, hey, I'm, I'm not doing implants and I'm not doing extractions anymore. I go, uh, you're much better at them, um, but I'm going to focus more on these cosmetics. 
And that was kind of the first initial um, really step that I took to this bigger picture, which is now Hales Aesthetics. And so what my career now is, is I only do cosmetic dentistry, uh, which is smile makeovers and veneers. Um, and I've handed all that off to my partners. We've brought on a new dentist, uh, Dr. Facer, last year, and now he handles all my gel dentistry. Uh, he does Invisalign, and then Dr. Parker does all our implants and full mouth rehabs in, in that aspect. So what we've done is we figured out kind of that niche that we wanted to focus on and really gone all in on that. And what I realized was, right, if you're trying to do everything all at the same time, you're never going to be amazing at anything, right? But if you kind of get and do one thing, then, then, you know, you're not doing everything, but you're amazing at one thing. And that was uh, something that I really took to heart because I'm, you know, very competitive in what I want and I want to be the best. And I knew that in order to be the best, I had to be something that I was doing every single day. Every day I was trying to get better at my craft, right? And I had to be focused on one thing. And so finally it came, I was saying, I'm going to do cosmetics and I'm going to create this brand. It's going to be called Hales Aesthetic. Um, and so this is my brand that I created. Try to get me in a room. Yeah, everybody want to talk. Right? I was coming with a tune. Mm, they don't want me to take it far, right? Something I already knew. Yeah, never needed your applause. Nah, they were saying it's a fluke. Mm, this is not a false alarm. Nah, it's not. Perfect. Yeah, and I never saw like, so perfect. I'm like, I love them so much. So, um, just kind of a quick clip about uh, what my brand represents. Um, so why, why I decided to do Hales Aesthetics, um, I still work with my partners, uh, Dr. Lincoln, Dr. Facer. We have our general practice, which is called Facer Hales Parker. Um, and this is my kind of my side thing. But why I did it is because when you look at, um, let's say you want to go do something or you want, to, uh, right, you want to go get some time for cosmetics done, right? you're not looking at really a brand of a people, you're looking at a person. And it's a lot easier to brand a person uh, than it is to brand a whole group, right? Uh, in, a, in a way, when it's a whole group, no one knows what you're really getting out of it. It's not like everyone is the same, right? Everyone's different. And so they're always gonna go for that certain person. And so when you, when you have that one aspect or you know a name on yourself, you're able to really brand that. And then that's where you're able to see a lot more success. So now that Hales Aesthetics, it's really a branded around me because that's what I provide, right? The, the type of dentistry that I do is going to be very different from, you know, what my partners do um, just because, you know, we're all different. Um, so <clears throat> how I kind of started to do that and transition to from gel dentistry to cosmetics was first I had to tell my partners I'm not doing implants anymore. Then the next thing I did was I told them that, hey, one day a week, I'm blocking out the whole day and we're only scheduling veneers or seats or veneer preps that day. So you can't schedule me anything else in the schedule um, because we're going to fill that with um, that cosmetics that I want to do. Um, you know, if there's nothing scheduled that day, then you leave it open and I'm going to be spending that day figuring out what type of marketing I need to do, what I need to do on social media in order to create that next week, that, that schedule is going to be full. Um, eventually that became full. So then I added a second day and then a third day. So, and then it just kind of grew from there. So what are veneers? Um, I don't know if a lot of you have ever seen veneers or, or know exactly what they are. So veneers are actually porcelain restorations. They're very thin, uh, depending on really how you prep the teeth and how you kind of go about it. Um, that picture on the left is what my lab gives me. So it's usually in that little box. Um, and then those are all the veneers. And then the right picture is those veneers on a model. Um, what it shows is basically, you know, what it can look like in the mouth. Um, and that's really mimicking all my preps that I've done in the mouth. And that's what I usually look at to get that perfect design from the lab. And I make any changes on there before I even have the patient come in. So, um, and that's where a lot of, design and structure goes into designing your process that hopefully works for you for getting the end result that you want. So this is a cool picture because it shows you two aspects of the really the natural teeth versus the veneers. 
And one thing that I've really worked on in my career is making natural looking veneers. If you look at a lot of veneers around the country or what other dentists are doing, it's it's not normal to see the, a lot of natural characteristics in it. A lot of people are always asking for, hey, that I want that Hollywood fake smile, right? I want the big, big bright smile. Um, and those teeth tend to be more bulky um, and more white and then more basically monotone in color. Now, the reason is, is it takes a lot more artistic skill to do what I do uh, with the right ceramists that are designing these with the translucency, with the characteristics of natural teeth, um, as it is to make just basically normal veneers, which are monotone in color um, and bulky. So what I'm trying to do is really design uh, teeth that look like teeth, um, the way they come out of the gums, the way the line angles are shaped, um, and even down to little white aspects in the incisal edges that are mimicking really nature um, and following those ratios that I talked about that we see in nature. Um, and so that's what I'm always playing off of. I take a lot of pictures, uh, a lot of studying of pictures, a lot of looking at other people's work uh, to continue to get better at my own craft. So I wanted to show you um, kind of my process <clears throat> when I have a patient. So when a patient comes in for the first time and they're interested in doing veneers, um, I do what's called a test drive. So I'll actually mock up on their teeth and show them what's possible. So this patient came to me, uh, she has really that um, peg lateral on the left side, misshaped teeth, very narrow. So everything's kind of coming down and in um, and short teeth. And so we wanted to kind of make them look bigger. And so we wanted to show her what was possible. So this is a test drive. Um, it's kind of a quick speed up of what it looks like, but it's basically what putting some material on the teeth and then shaping them to make them look like veneers. So this usually takes me about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, it's not perfect. It's just a quick mock-up so they can look in the mirror uh, from afar and then it comes right on, off afterwards. So they just actually take it right off. So it does take a lot of skill to really learn how to do this. You know, when I first started doing it, my test drives did not come out very well. Um, and so I've had to practice to make sure that they look natural. They look like veneers, you know, after the fact. So this is the test drive, one of the earlier uh, renditions. But you can see how now we've added the length. We've gotten more balance within that smile. You know, um, that on the left side is a little bit shorter. So I would like to add a little bit more length to that. Uh, but this would be 10 veneers showing her. Now we've got that fullness and now we've added that length. Uh, so I'll show you this video. Yeah, something that was a huge game changer for me was when I really started doing the test drives. And people always ask me, what is a test drive? What does it do? And they think it's something on the computer. With the test drive, I place some composite that's a foldable plastic material on their teeth and shape it to look like veneers. And then they can actually look in the mirror and see it for themselves. And it's a very emotional process because then they're able to really see it on themselves versus something on a computer screen or something in a picture and give them the opportunity to really see what can make a difference and what's gonna help them really build their confidence. Mm -hmm. So again, you want to figure out, right, when you're doing business, right, what, what really um, makes you different than everybody else. And when you look at a lot of cosmetic dentists out there or, you know, gel dentists, you know, they're not spending the time to do this because it does take time, right? It's 30, 40 minutes of my time. Doctor has to be there the whole time to be able to perform this. But what it does is allow the patient to really see it, right? I can easily send out a picture, get a digital mock-up from, you know, any any company out there you know and and send that to them but it's not the same because it's just basically someone else's smile that we're basically copy photoshopping onto their their face um and so when i decided what i was going to do i was going to be like i'm going to you know be different from everyone else and i'm going to do the test drive for every patient to show them what's possible and every time you show it to them right it's an amazing reaction um and it gives them kind of that idea of your expertise because you're shaping this you know in 30 minutes of a smile um and then letting them see that so it's really neat it's um, something that i love to do it's again practicing your skills you know on a patient but also working with your hands which is what i love um and then of course you know when you have the reveal everything is content nowadays um so you always want to 
So, I mean, that's always one of my favorite parts is just showing them the reveal of the smile. Um, and, you know, same thing as I always try to point out aspects that I, that I would change. Um, again, it's not perfect. And you're just kind of showcasing your expertise on that, helping them understand that, you know, you see it, but that we can make it more perfect. Um, so one thing that we work on at our practice here at Face Reels Parker is we always try to be at the top of new technology. Um, new technology makes things easier most of the time, um, but also make things allow you to do things faster. And so it's impressive with all the technology the industry is doing. Uh, you know, it's just fun to be in dentistry because there's always new things coming out, always new ideas, new toys you can kind of try out. Um, and so you know, it's just part, part of dentistry that's going to be here in the future and going to continue to grow. Um, this CAD CAM machine, those are called basically what we do same day crowns. So instead of having to send out our, la our, our crowns or our single unit crowns, we make them here in house and then we're designing those on the computer. So you're actually doing a lot of the, the work that used to be done in the lab, you know, you can do in your own, in your own office and you become that lab person. So you actually are able to learn more about all the different aspects of dentistry and really make a difference. Um, we have the Itero scanner, which is the same thing. Now we don't have to initially always take impressions. We can scan with the digital scanner. We can send that to the printer um, or to a, a lab if we need like a night guard or something, uh, but it's way faster. Patients don't have to gag anymore. Um, and it's pretty impressive. Uh, we have a CBCT scanner. So a lot of offices don't have this. We have a, a big 16 by 17 inch scan, which actually shows the whole head. Why we did that is we do a lot of airway and sleep dentistry. Um, so we can actually look at, you know, parts of the brain, you know, the airway, the sinuses, of course, the teeth, um, all of that to really help diagnose anything else that we're seeing. When you realize in dentistry, it's more than just focusing on teeth, right? You're actually healthcare and we always focus on comprehensive care. So we're looking at all the different aspects of the jaw joint, right, the sinuses, the bone level, everything else to be able to help our patient gain an understanding of where their health is at, um, even if they're just coming in for regular cleaning, right? Do we wanna make sure we're taking top quality care for that patient? Laser is one of the biggest um, instruments that I use in cosmetics and energy because I'm using it to shape the gums to make it balanced and make it even um, across the a smile transformation all the time. Um, so I love that thing, it does an amazing job. Um, and then I still use a lab for my veneers. So mine are not made in house. Um, I have a special lab that I use or ceramics that I found I actually help them establish their lab. And so that way that their process actually mimics what I want for my process here in the office. Um, and that's also one of the reasons why I can get such results that I want. But, you know, it's not something that I can just make in office. It takes way too much time. So I have them make it. Um, they That's what they specialize in, right? It's, again, focusing on what you're best at. And they're amazing at what they can do. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple different cases um, and just kind of show you what kind of results we can get. So uh, this is one of my patients where she came to see me. Um, she actually flew in from South Carolina. And she had, you know, worn out teeth. Her teeth, you know, look pretty good for most people. Uh, they always thought that she had a really nice smile, but she I always hide her smile because she said they were short. She didn't like the color. Um, the bottom teeth are actually super crooked. So she has this huge cant on the bottom teeth. And so we needed to correct all that. So this is a video. 
kind of showing my process. So and it's a quick peek of basically that process, right, from start to finish of her, you know, for the initial consultation to prepping the veneers to seating the veneers and letting her see that in the smile. Uh, so I know it's a quick video, but it's pretty cool to kind of see that. So photography is one of my passions as well, um, something that I'm constantly trying to improve on, you know, learn about how lighting um, works with pictures, but also how they reflect off natural teeth and porcelain veneers. When you look at dentistry, there's a lot more to it than just teeth. And, you know, if you guys are looking to go into dentistry, you're going to wear a lot of different hats. Um, and it depends on what you're doing, of course, but no matter what, even if you're just doing general dentistry, there's so much behind the scenes that you're going to have to learn how to do, you know, um, between really marketing, you know, HR, um, running a practice, uh, you know, insurance specialist, you know, those are just the bare minimum of what it takes to really run a practice, you know, and then on top of it, when you specialize in cosmetics, right, you got your photography, you've got your social media, you got your video editing, um, just so many things that I've, that I've come to learn and have to put time into uh, because that's how you really grow and that's how you allow other people to see what you can do and what you can achieve. So this was Madison's um, temporaries. Uh, so when you're looking at them, I want the temporaries to look as good as the finals. Now, obviously, that's not always going to be possible, but I want the patient to be able to really see the end result before we get there. So these were her finals. Um, again, she wanted them nice and bright. And so we were able to do that with some translucency, with some character to it. So it wasn't the big fake looking teeth. And they still have a lot of very thin natural characteristics of what natural teeth are um, versus veneer. So she loved them. Um, this is one of my favorite cases. Um, he came to me and he had found me <clears throat> and realized that, or had told me that he was kind of a younger guy who started his own business um, and was doing pretty well, but realized that he would go have meetings with other, you know, business people and they wouldn't take him seriously because of his smile. He said it really affected his career and really his confidence. And he loved kind of my work and he had been following me for a long time, wanted to smile and knew I could help him. So he had kind of a lot of things going on. Um, so we kind of talked about some options, you know, do we want to do some braces first? everything lined up. Um, and he was kind of at the point where he's like, dude, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, I know you can give me a big smile, you know, and I know there's going to be some limitations with having to prep the teeth, but, you know, make do the best you can. And so, um, you know, when you look at a prep, that's the most important part of the veneer process, really the design. For the most part, most of my preps are very conservative where I'm trying to take the least amount of tooth structure away um, to try and conserve that tooth. Right. In some cases, in his case, right, we've got, if we look at his smile, right, we've got that space in between the teeth. We've got one tooth that's too long. We've got the angulation that's off. So we've got to change all that, which then we need to create that space for the ceramics to be able to make them natural. Um, if I under prep or I don't prep enough, then either the tooth underneath is going to be showing, which is pretty yellow, or um, it's going to be too bulky and then they're, they're not going to be able to match one side from the other, right? If let's say, you know, my canine tooth is really bulky because I didn't prep enough. Well, that tooth is going to stick out versus everything else, unless you make everything else bulky. So it really comes down to your design in the smile. You've got to have a good game plan and then you've got to execute that game plan. So these were his temporaries. Um, 
when we look at them, you know, it just turned into amazing result. Uh, the bottoms are really one of the, the biggest changes. Um, and I'll show you what those look like. And then these were his finals, right? He wanted them a little bit longer than the temps. We added some translucency. But you can just see, you know, from the from the temps to the finals, what an amazing result. And he he was still working on the getting those gums are going to heal even better um, and make the smile even, look even greater. So this was his smile transformation. Uh, you can really see that bottom teeth and kind of where they were at, you know, as well as the top teeth. Um, he actually just sent me a video, uh, kind of. Uh, thanking me and just saying how confident he feels. Um, he said that it was life-changing because now his business actually has really taken off it just because he feels more confident when he's talking to other people, when he's talking to other you know bosses, they're not looking at his smile or thinking down upon him. He looks more professional. He, he definitely plays that part more as a, as a business owner. Um, and so that was really neat to kind of hear, you know, at the end of the day, you know, who we are inside is the most important aspect. And I think that everyone can be confident no matter who you are. Um, but in some ways, you know, this is ways that I can be able to help out them understand, you know, from a outside perspective, I can give them a smile where that's helping them feel confident, right? If there's some way that they feel lack of confidence, right? This smile is a good way to show them what a difference it can make. Here's another cool video. That's all I see is how bad my teeth are. They make me feel ugly. It has affected my mental health a lot the past year. A lot. My dream for my smile is to allow me to be me. But to be the person that I am. That I really am inside without having to hide my teeth. Zima had reached out to us because she had seen that we'd done Madison and LaCroix's veneers. And she loved them, right? Everyone wants the, those teeth, which is awesome. And the thing about working with people from across the country is you really don't know exactly what you're getting yourself into until they come and they show up. So from an expert level, there is a lot that I knew and that I didn't know, right? So I knew that she had short teeth because of the wear, because of her grinding. And then we knew that we were going to correct that. I also knew she was missing some of her molar teeth on the bottom. So again, lack of function that we were going to be able to really create in that moment. With that, I had to understand, okay, how could I get that function even better with the veneers in the design? And then where am I able to get balanced occlusion with those missing teeth? And so that's where it came kind of like a puzzle for me. And how do I nail this for her, where now function is giving the longevity of the veneers um, and they're going to last and give her that smile that she wants. This is the opportunity to change someone's life. I am nervous, excited, because by the end of today, I could just smile, not be afraid of that people are looking at my bad teeth. I can feel teeth. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Are you ready to see? Mm -hmm. Come with me. We're going to go up to the front. <laughs> All right, so come over here. Of course. <laughs> Looks so good. <laughs> Excited for you. Thank you. I love that. Oh, good. It's been five weeks since I had a 10 upper um, temporary veneers with Dr. Hales, and here we are. They feel real. They feel like my teeth, just a lot better and just a very amazing upgraded version. This past five weeks have changed my life completely. You can't imagine what a smile does to your confidence. And I'm so grateful and so thankful for Dr. Hales. I feel like he knew what my smile used to look like and he brought it back to life. There was absolutely no pain at all. I 100% recommend if you are thinking about it, do it. I am so excited to eat food. Before, I was so scared to actually bite down or chew just because I was scared to break my teeth even further than, they, than what they were. But now I'm excited to bite into some good food and chew it and not be scared because I have really good, strong teeth now. Dr. Hale is amazing at what he does. My life has changed in the most amazing ways. I feel a lot more confident talking to people. And it has just changed all the way around with my family, with my friends. It has just changed all the way around, 100%.
My confidence is at a thousand percent for sure. Dr. Hales, thank you for changing my life forever, for making me feel alive again, for giving me the confidence that I needed to live my life a little better. I never in my wildest dreams thought this would be possible for me. If you are self-conscious about your smile and you're having doubts about your smile, do not wait. Go run and do it now. Just had so much fun, you know, finishing this smile with Zima and be able to give her something that, you know, she's wanted for a long time, but more importantly, that she really deserves. And, you know, that's what it's all about be able to make a difference in someone's life. Yeah, and you know what it really made me think was about how many times there's people out there that really have to go through these things in life and how they don't feel like they deserve that. And I want you to know that everyone deserves to smile, right? Everyone deserves to be confident. And so if you feel like that's you and you want to see what it can take to get that smile for yourself and know that I'm here to give you at least some guidance to help you on your way to find the smile of your dreams. So that's one of my favorite uh, transformations. And I'd probably say that not every patient, but um, she was actually someone from Texas. And uh, it was amazing because she was supposed to be getting married. And um, she had reached out and I told her that, you know, I'll do your smile, but you've got to, uh, you know, send me pictures of, of your wedding. And she had told me that she hadn't hired a photographer for her wedding because she felt so self-conscious about her smile that she didn't even want to see and remember that day or see pictures of her. And so that just was so heartbreaking for me because like it's your wedding day. Like that's the most important, one of the most important days of your life. And you got to remember that. And just because you, you're not smiling. And so to be able to give her that and, you know, to get those pictures of her at the wedding, was just amazing because it is, it's life-changing. And I think that no matter what aspects you do in dentistry, you can make a difference in people's lives. Um, and that's why I love this career because, you know, from a simple feeling to toothache, right. People, people trust you so much to just come in and quickly, you know, be able to allow you to do what you do and, um, even a smile transformation, even more, you know, um, my process I've slowly tweaked over the years. Um, to get more control in the end result that I wanted. Um, I always kind of hated just like saying, Hey, let's do a small makeover. And then all of a sudden put in the veneers and it's, you know, not exactly what they wanted. So, and it's not exactly what I wanted. And that's where I wanted to really understand, Hey, let's talk about what your, what your goals are. And then I look at very specific details when it comes to the temps and my test drives. Um, and then I get, you know, their input as well, because you want every smile unique, right? No smile should be the same. Um, and you want their input. You want to focus on their goals, not exactly what you want. Um, and so this is what my cosmetic consult or my aesthetic check is going to be. So this was a uh, slate just after we did the temporaries. Um, and this is kind of how it goes down. This is Dr. TV. It's Hales Parker Television. So we got slayed in today for an aesthetics check. And that's so vital to my process. That's where we can sit down and go over what do they look like? What shape do we have? And is that something that they like? All right. So how do you kind of look at this first? Oh, yes. I see that this now looks like it's more open now. So do you like that or do you like the other side better? You know, they looked great. His main concern was the length of the front teeth. Because of this appointment, I know that we had to take those down. It's not a big change, but on him, he saw how huge it was. Let me see. Yes, I swear that little bit makes a big difference. Yeah, no, a little bit makes a big difference. With Gretchen, it was great having her too. You always want the wife involved. That's what wives are for, right, Ben? Mm -hmm. They see the smile all the time. And so that's where we can go back and forth to make those final details to make everything look great. And that's why we're going to have such an amazing result. It actually makes it exciting to come into the dentist. You think you're changing for it until he comes in and actually does a test drive. He didn't hear a kid a test drive. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's great, great character. Um, but you always want that input, right? <clears throat> you always want the patient happy in the end. That's really the most important thing. Um, you know, and I always say, you know, try to always make patient come first. Um, it's going to make your life easier and uh, it's going to make your career go better just because, you know, it's always hard to try and just uh, stand your grounds when patients aren't happy. So 
um, there's a lot of things that I've learned kind of, and, you know, the years that I've worked so far, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes and, you know, that's okay because that's really how you learn. Um, but anything that I can always pass on and really help you guys not have to make those same mistakes, I think is so important. Um, and so these are some of recommendations that I, you know, if I was in your shoes, what I would do differently um, and what I would really focus on to allow me to get, you know, uh, opportunities quicker or faster. Um, so number one is, you know, network, never be afraid to really, um, make an introduction or ask for an introduction, uh, find a mentor, find someone that you trust, um, that you want to be like, right. Uh, and initially when I first started, like there were so many guys that I loved and, uh, who I looked, looked forward to. Right. And I was like, that's who I want to be. Um, I know <clears throat> when I first started, I love Dr. Appa. He's a great dentist. Um, you can follow him on Instagram. He does amazing work. Um, and Dr. Brian Harris. So Dr. Brian Harris was one of the first cosmetic dentists I, I met. And he's been a huge mentor of mine. He's really one of the main reasons why I am where I am today is because Brian or Dr. Harris really took, uh, you know, liking to me or just really helped me and, and gave me such great sound advice not everything did I take and apply and I learned from that. Um, but he was always there because he wanted to see me succeed and he does cosmetic dentistry. He still does it. He does an amazing job. Um, and he's allowed me to kind of grow, uh, under his, you know, curtail to be able to see myself and grow with that brand. So it's been really fun, but definitely finding that, that mentor, don't be afraid to make a cold call. Okay. If you have a number, just call him, introduce yourself. Um, you never know when that's going to turn into something else, right? It, if I, um, I literally cold called my partner, I hadn't talked to him and I don't know how many years I got his phone number from his dad, you know, and it'd been years and years and I called him up and now we turned into partners, right? And so it's just an opportunity that I would never have right now if I was afraid to do, do that. Um, go ahead and educate yourself. Dentistry, there's so many good aspects of dentistry. And honestly, there's good careers out there that aren't dentists, Right. Um, so really getting an understanding if this is the career for you and then where is that going to take you? Where is that going to lead you? Right. Is there a specialty that you really like? Do you like having the options of doing different things every single day? Um, you know, finding out what you like, talking to dentists, talking to specialists. Um, I did a lot of shadowing in my undergrad because um, I just liked doing my research. So that's just one thing that I like to do. Um, and I liked building a network. And so those are things that really helped me get to where I am. But if you would have asked me, you know, when I started dental school, would I be a cosmetic dentist? I probably would have told you no. Uh, I probably would have told you I wanted to be an oral surgeon. And that's probably where I thought I would have been. Um, but <clears throat> you never know where life takes you. So, you know, find what you're passionate about. And that takes time, right? Don't just jump into it and make a decision and think that that's the end result. Um, because otherwise my life would be very different from where it is today. So find that passion and then go all in, right? Don't don't sell yourself short, but do 110% um, getting involved and making sure that you're the best, okay? Because if you just do anything half-heartedly, you know, then <clears throat> you can be successful, um, but is that going to give you joy and happiness? Uh, you know, I think that there's just so much more potential when you just are, are very passionate and do what you're best at it. Um, and then, of course, be yourself. I think there's a lot about you. You're going to have to understand a lot about yourself in these upcoming years because you got to make a lot of decisions um, and you want to make sure that you're making the decision that's right for you, right? Don't go listening to what other people want you to do. Uh, make that decision for yourself. Um, another thing I say is take business classes. Honestly, I don't think I ever took a business class. We had like a tiny little introduction to business in dental school. And so when I came out in the, the business world, I had no idea what I was doing. I've had to learn, you know, on basically in the moment, how to run a business. Um, and I've made a lot of mistakes because I've lost a lot of money. So if you can learn that in school, um, you know, really figure that out because if you want to own your own practice, you've got to know how to run a business. And I would say that probably most dentists are not great businessmen and don't run, you know, it doesn't take much to run a very successful practice if you know what you're doing. I'd say take a photography class. Um, today, social media is so big, no matter what you're doing. Right. Even general dentistry, you take intro photos. I take when I do our on my practice, when we do any initial um, 
patient, new patient comes to our office, we don't even get them in for cleanings. We sit them down and we take photos of their smile. We take intro photos of their teeth and we sit there and we look at it together with them. So we're taking pictures and that's just for general dentistry and just cleanings, right? So that they can have an understanding of where they are, what they're looking at, how do we diagnose things? So we're educating all our patients instead of just telling them you need a filling, you know, go up front and they'll, they'll get you scheduled. We're helping them make that decision for themselves and we're educating them. And then finally, self-care. So dentistry is a great, great profession. I love it, um, but it, it can be very stressful and you have to take care of yourself. There came to a point in my career when I was just so busy that I felt like I was going to crack. I just had so much stress and anxiety. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't taking care of myself health-wise. Um, and I literally felt like my body was shutting down. And it wasn't taking care of myself. Like I was too focused on everyone else and everything else that was going on that I realized, hey, I've got to stop doing these other things. Um, and that was where, you know, I made sure that I was going to bed really early so that I could wake up early, that I could go to the gym because, you know, I was starting to get back problems from, from dentistry. Um, and then I read a lot of self-help books to really understand my mind. I think that when we can really... Um, give our, give our mind a break and let it understand more about stress and how to handle that. Right. Don't let that all affect you. Um, cause it just, it's not helpful, right. There's going to be always be stress. You know, there's always something that can stress you out, but the more we kind of work on ourselves, the more you'll be able to handle that. And then that's just going to help when you look at your business and how that's going to affect your employees, your patients, everyone around you when you're happier and just healthier. So you know, those are some things that I, that I try to do. I try to read 10 pages of a, any book just every day in the morning. And then I do a little bit of meditation, uh, right before I go to the gym. So that again, you're, you're just spending that time. Um, and then you gotta be healthy, right? Dentists have a, um, there's just a, there's a lot of them are on disability because they have a lot of back issues or things like that. And so that's where you've got to take care of yourself if you want to live a long career in this and, and it's rewarding. So, you know, do that. Um, so that's basically all my, all my ideas or uh, tips and tricks, you know, in, in kind of a presentation, um, you know, my social media. So on Instagram, it's Dr. Tyler Hales. You can follow me, you can message me, um, you know, please feel free to ask me any questions that you guys have. Um, I'm always here. Social media is really one that I actually use mostly to communicate with people. Um, but yeah, let me know how else I can help and let me know kind of what questions you guys have. Um, if there's anything I can do. Uh... Thank you. We do have um, two questions that are in the chat that I will read to you. Cool. And answer those. So um, Megan wanted to know what kind of puppy you guys were getting. <laughs> Uh, awesome. So uh, we're doing getting an Australian Labradoodle. Oh. So my wife always wanted she she made stipulations on a dog. She said that it can't shed and that it has to be small. So it's actually a miniature Australian Labradoodle. So um, we I had to be, she was very picky in how we chose this dog, but it's cute. It's um, a breeder out of Utah, and so you kind of pick the special breed that's supposed to be pretty smart train them so my goal is actually to have it be um a therapy dog in my office so that when patients come in for a small transformation there's this amazing dog that they can kind of hold and help calm them down yeah that's awesome um so we have another question from emma she is wondering what is the most challenging and the most rewarding part about dental school for you um dental school the most challenging part, honestly, was taking the final REBS, which is the which is your practical exam at the end. Now, they might change that at the end, um, but honestly, that was like the most stressful time of my entire life. What we had to do in, in that time was you had to get patients that qualified for these um, tests. And so you had to get like, it was like a class two filling um, and then... Um, like a class four, four filling and then some SRPs, which are like a deep cleaning. And so first you had to make sure that you picked the right patient that actually showed up on that day. Usually you had to pay that patient for them to come because if they didn't show up, you're screwed. And then um, 
then you had to perform, but it had to qualify for exactly what they needed, right? It could have been a filling, but or if that cavity wasn't big enough or it was too big, you would have failed. So it just was like a lot of lack of control. Um, and I just remember that night trying to sleep and I was like, this is, this is crazy. You know, luckily everything went great, but <laughs> I just remember that's, that's definitely one of the hardest things. Um, honestly, one of the most rewarding things of dental school is really the people you meet. Um, one of my buddies, dude, uh, we had the best group of guys and girls that we hung out with and we would spend our time studying. I mean, you spend all your time together and <clears throat> to even today, like they're my best friends and we are always communicating on like, Hey, check out this case. Like, you know, as a little mastermind group. And one of my buddies, he's in the military and he actually just moved back to my hometown, like 10 minutes from my house. And we're just, I hadn't seen him in like four years. He'd been, um, he'd been in Spain and, and I just, we sit there and we remember dental school and just how many good times we had together. I mean, it's way stressful and busy and things like that, but the, really the, the memories and the friendships that you make there, you know, you're going to have those forever. So it's, it's really fun. So uh, Megan also had another question. She wanted to know how well do you feel dental school prepared you with the skills to do what you do now? Or did you have to take additional training and fees to get to that point? So that's a great question. Um, so I think that dental school doesn't prepare you very well for the real world. <laughs> for number one, right? Like, how do you run a business? Like, you don't learn that in dental school. Like, USC, when I went there, they gave you a drill on the first day of school, and you're you're prepping, you know, fake teeth on day one, right? So I felt like I left dental school with pretty good hand skills. Like, I could prep a crown, I could prep a filling, um, I could do fillings really well. That aspect, like, I felt very confident in. Um, I, I kind of knew exactly why I was doing what I was doing, I knew how to kind of diagnose, right? That takes time just to, with patients and things like that. So hand skill wise, I felt like I was pretty good. I mean, it takes probably a year or two to really get your speed up. And, but to really like cosmetics, I didn't really learn much of anything in, in dental school, or at least like didn't pay that much attention because when they did talk about cosmetics, I still didn't know what, what you know, lateral was or uh, like the, the anatomy of the teeth. And so how are we supposed to focus on all these cosmetics? I don't even know the anatomy, you know? Um, so sometimes I think it just kind of goes over your head. And so when you come out of school, I mean, CE courses and trainings, additional trainings are so important. I mean, that is where I've learned everything because I think that once I found my passion, right, that's where I was going, I was spending all my time doing that. Um, and you're going to learn so much more once you have a basic understanding. I think dental school does a good job trying to prepare you you know, depending on where you go, you want to find a good dental school that works well with you. So I'm a hands-on learner. USC does all their stuff, mostly hands-on. Um, not, they have very limited, basically like classrooms, teacher, professor sitting at the front going over lectures is mostly hands-on and what we call PBL. And so that worked really, really well for me because it was just me having to figure it out, learn it. Um, and it, it worked really well for me and that may not work for everyone. So find a school that really works with the way you, you learn. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it is, it's a lot of fun, but I don't think that they prepare you. They do their best, I would say, but it's, you're going to learn a lot more outside of dental school than you are in dental school. Yeah. Um, and then I also have one more question for you. As far as dental school goes, how do you feel like you prepared yourself to take on that heavy course load, but also give yourself time to do things outside of the classroom? During dental school? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, you just got to make time, you know, like I think that setting boundaries for yourself um, and just making sure you're uh, efficient, uh, then you can definitely do that. I think dental school isn't as crazy as like medical school, like my brother-in-law He's in residency right now. He's like doing 80 hours a week. Right. And I was like, dude, that, that was never me in dental school, you know, because uh, it was there's a lot more time. Um, and you, and the nice thing is like third and fourth year, you're working with patients and uh, your dental clinic's not open 24 hours a day. So it does give you a little bit more freedom um, and find hobbies. I mean, you've got to get yourself out of you can't be in a book all day long. You know, what I mean, you're going to drive yourself crazy. So find your passion find ways that you can really go and do things that you enjoy.
because that's going to keep your mind clean and and ready. Um, and so I would always, you know, study for so long. And then when I would feel myself just getting overworked or tired, I'd go take a break or take a nap and get rejuvenated. Right. Um, I was married when I was in dental school. So it was easy because we, I used to be like, Hey, let's go to dinner or let's go do this. And then I had kids. And so I didn't really have time to really mess around <laughs> and do all this other stuff. Right. I, I was able to focus my time with them, but I really wanted to make sure that I separated you know, my schooling with my family and you can do the same, you know, just with your free time. So I think just keeping the, you know, your, your time prioritized. All right. Um, and then we also have some more questions. Megan wanted to know, um, earlier you mentioned that most general dentists will tell you they're cosmetic dentists, but what are the qualities or things someone should look for when they're deciding to have a cosmetic procedure done like veneers? Yeah. So, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm looking for someone who does it all the time. Okay. I mean, there's so many dentists that say I'm a cosmetic dentist. I do veneers and they do like two veneer cases a year. Right. Like I wouldn't want to be there. I wouldn't want them doing my veneers. Right. I want someone who's doing it really well. I would like to look at their before and afters. So show me your case. Every dentist is going to have a different look. So their veneers are all going to look in a similar way. So you want to find the dentist that's going to really have that look that you're going for. Um, and then really someone that like is looking out for your best interest. So asking questions um, and making sure, ask them like, hey, what, what is your vision for me? You know what I mean? Like, what does that look like? Because they should be able to kind of really gain, have a good understanding of who you are and uh, what that's going to be. So um, those are kind of the three things that I see. Then um, there's an ebook that I have of kind of like my recommendations for someone looking for veneers. And you can always download that. And it's on my website. Um, but that's, you know, it's, it just kind of gives you some good questions to ask and things like that. Right. And, um, I don't know if this is a thing, but, um, if how often do you think people are likely to have their veneers replaced if they even need to be replaced? Yeah. So normally I'd say, you know, 20 to 30 years, you're looking to replace those veneers. Um, some people are, are shorter than that depends on how much force. So if you take a Ferrari and you, you drive it a hundred miles an hour all the time, right. That thing's not going to last as long as something else. So someone that's a heavy grinder, right. Not wearing their night guard, um, constantly, you know, biting their teeth. Uh, those veneers are going to chip or wear out faster than others. Um, and sometimes it's not even that their, their veneers are wearing out, but it's honestly that the material's gotten better and they want an upgraded look. So those veneers, like a crown, right? Those are going to last a long time. It's not like a crown or a filling should truly really break down in that time period. Um, you know, I have patients come in and they've got a crown when they were teenagers and they're now like 40, 50 years old. And so veneers can be the same as long as they're done, you know, well. Um, but also when you look at the function and how that's interacting so that you're not putting the, the wrong forces on those to make them last. So 20 to 30 years is always what I tell. And also, Emma had another question. Um, was there a point during dental school when you questioned whether you made the right choice to pursue dentistry? Was your decision pretty much solid by the time you made it to dental school? Um, yeah, I actually always wanted to be an anesthesiologist. My dad was an anesthesiologist. My, my grandpa was an anesthesiologist. And my brother is a resident in an anesthesia. So that was always my goal. Um, and so when I made the decision to go into dentistry, um, I'm the only dentist in my family. I don't know anyone that's in my family that's a dentist. So for me, I knew that it was always something that I wanted to do. I, I really made the research to do it. Um, and so I've never regretted it. I never thought that I made a poor choice. I actually love what I do. I honestly do. I, I enjoy going to work on Mondays. Um, and I love seeing patients all the time. Like someone calls me in for emergency on the weekends, like I don't get frustrated because I just love working with people. I love working with my hands. So for me, it's it's a career that that it's it's not a job for me. It's it's a lifestyle, and that's what I love to do. So I don't regret it. And I believe that was the last question. So I do want to thank you so much for coming and taking time out of your day to talk to us all. And I hope everyone does have a great day. Thank you guys for coming again. Thank you, Dr. Hales, for coming and speaking with us today. You're welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me. You're welcome. You guys have a good day.